well, I have the mask on, so you know I'm going to do some surgery. Today, I'm going to show you what a pressure point hygroma is. It's a callus over the sharp points of the dog's elbow, or in this case, the hawk, which is a little rare because it beats its hawk or its elbow up on the ground all the time, and it, pro and it produces a callus. So let's, uh, I'm going to show you the, 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 the callus or pressure point, then I'm going to show you how I take it off now. The, this is the leg, and uh, it's all shaved up, and then I'm going to put the, the drape over, and here's the pressure point. See, that's the, that's the, the hawk joint, and this is a big callus, and the dog beat it up so much, it, it ulcerated, that's a wound. I usually don't want to operate on these because they, the dogs tend to beat them up again and again. But this one has this kind of growth on it and it looks ugly and it's never going to heal like it is. So I'm going to be brave and I'm going to cut it out. That's the easy part. The hard part is going to be, will the dog let it heal? That's what's going to be the problem. So let's cut it out and see if See, I'm going to look at the, the tumor kind of that's there, or the callus, and make sure it didn't turn into a tumor from the callus. Remove the hygroma or callus or tumor. I'm going to incise the skin right by the hock or the bony part of the hock. And then i got to cut through the connective yeah. tissue that's joining uh, the hock to the, the, the callus or the, the mass, the hygroma. And then I'm going to take the skin off on the other side and then that leaves me with a just the skin to close up so I can take off the mask and there's the callus inside of the skin it's kind of a circular thing and you can see how it's old so this is the hawk bone and and like our crazy bone and this is a tendon that's coming down this is the Achilles tendon and then I'm going to try to cover this and sew it really, really good so it stays closed. Okay. So the suture goes up on one side, it's a subcutaneous su no. suture, and then it goes down on the other side from the top. So what that does is it, it buries the suture inside. It's called a subcutaneous stitch. And we use it a lot as a, it's the actually holding stitch of the body. So what we do is we want to sew this together with a subcutaneous stitch and then a stitch above it, a skin, a skin suture, skin stitch. Now you saw the big open hole and I have subcutaneous stitches in to hold it closed. And so now I'm going to do a skin suture. So we start at the, we can start at the top or start at the middle, and we want the, the the skin suture to come right out at the edge because then it makes a nice, it holds the the skin together really nice. So, so we wrap it three times. We put the, we bring the skin edge together. You don't want to tighten it too much because if you tighten it too much, it cuts off the blood supply. And if you cut off the blood supply, then it can't help it heal. So remember, we're not sewing together furniture. We're sewing together skin. So it's really important to, to uh, allow the blood vessels to get in there. So as you can see, we've, we've sutured up the wound with uh, what we call simple interrupted. The stitches go in on top all the way down. So it's over in in one side and out the other on top. Unlike the skin suture that went inside, this is the outside suture. These will have to be removed in about 14, 10 to 14 days. We leave them in a little longer when it's an elbow because it, it, they tend to beat up these places. They don't heal well. Uh, and we want the sutures in there for a while. We might even leave them in for a few weeks. And we're going to try to keep the advantage for a while. So we're going to get the bloody, bloody stuff around out here. 
here's the here's that uh, growth and let's just is it scar tissue or is it growth I might send a take a piece of it and send it to the lab so I'm gonna cut into it see what it's made of see what it's made of looks like a growth so we might want to send that into the to lab and see what this growth is so we really just want to send in this growth we don't want to send in the skin so but boy it is tough okay. like, but it could be a tendon or ligament growth but you can see it's a that's what a growth is it's just an unorganized piece of tissue so we'll send it in and see if it's something we have to worry about or not now that we've cut the mass off this is the most important thing we're going to do is wrap this hawk this bandage has to stay on, and I'm done with surgery. Right. <laughs> I don't really have any hair, but I like to shake my head like that. <laughs> but uh, I'm done with surgery, so I'm gonna put a bandage on this hawk because that's the thing that's gonna make this thing heal. The important thing is this dog has to keep this bandage on in order for it to heal. So I'm gonna try to do a really good job wrapping it. So I'm gonna. Um, this is the padding part of the wrap. Um, we want the, the, the bandage to be up against the skin. And these are hard things to wrap because the hawk, it moves a lot and they bang it. But at least it's smaller now and hopefully that, that taking that growth off or that callus will help this heal. So we want to put a pretty good padding and why would we put all so much padding on it? Rob? Why, why would we pat it like this? Make sure we can cinch it down without turning kidding off the foot. Yeah, without putting too much pressure on the foot. And what's the biggest reason? So the dog can't chew it. And that's, that's another good reason. You're coming up with a bunch of reasons. And what's the other reason? You're the doctor. You tell me. Yeah. So, so what are we doing? We're immobilizing the joint. Yeah, and we're, and we're actually patting this outside uh, where, where uh, Jaeger's going to hit this. Hawk, we're gonna we're gonna put a bunch of this padding on. In fact, so we overdo it for this leg. So this is gonna be really padded. I don't usually do this, but in this case, with the point of the hawk there, you need to have a whole bunch of bandage. So now that's pretty padded. If he bangs it, at least it won't be so bad. So now we're going to put our pretty green paw wrap on it. In some dogs, I will wrap all the way down the foot, but Jaeger will just make it all dirty and he'll chew it off and he, he might not leave it. So I think I'm going to just not put it all the way down. If you put too much of a pressure here, it'll make the foot swell up. So whenever a bandage is put on, make sure the foot doesn't swell up. If his foot swells on, up, you put it on too tight. If you don't do this, anchor it to the skin directly, it will fall off but we don't want to put that on very tight. I'm just laying it on there and then we're going to we're going to bring it down and we're going to anchor it on the on the bottom. Now, I'm just laying it down. I'm not I'm not put I'm not I'm not trying to tourniquet. I'm just laying it on the leg. Laying it nicely. So so it doesn't get so it doesn't get uh, too tight and and take out the circulation and swell up the leg. We don't want that. So, so this is loose, but it's anchored. So I can pull it up pretty easy. This is a really, now a firm bandage. Um, and if it hits it, it's less likely to cause trauma. I actually, this, I laid this on here and in order to make sure there was a, um, not too much tension, I actually cut a releasing slit in it to make sure that this leg doesn't swell up. A hawk needs to be really bandaged tightly and firmly around the hawk, above it to keep it on. There's no way this bandage is gonna slip off if you make this tight enough, but not so tight to decrease the circulation and cause swelling.